Hello scientists! My name is Mariana and I'm with Scientific Adventures for Girls. Today we'll be making a tool called an anemometer to measure wind speed. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the wind. Wind is moving air, and some of you may know that moving air is a force that can push and move objects. If it's strong enough, it can blow your hair around or a pile of leaves, but really strong winds can be dangerous and even make trees fall over. But wind is still very helpful. We use the wind to fly kites on windy days and even generate electricity in wind turbines. Why do we have wind? What causes it? Well, it's caused by warm air and cool air trading places. The sun warms up air and warm air rises. Cool air sinks. When warm air and cool air trade places, it causes wind. Knowing how windy it is outside can be very helpful. So scientists, like meteorologists that study weather, use a tool called an anemometer. This tool catches air in small cups and spins around. How fast the anemometer spins is an indicator of how fast the wind is blowing. Now scientists, to make your own anemometer to measure wind speed, you'll just need a few simple materials. You'll need some thick cardboard, about 10 inches long and at least 3 inches wide, four small cups, like Dixie cups, tape, scissors, a pencil with a fresh eraser, and a long pin. A safety pin or paper clip works too. If you don't have small cups, you can use these alternatives. Cut four empty water bottles in half and use either the tops or the bottoms, or cut toilet paper tubes in half and tape a circular piece of cardboard over the bottom to make four cups. To start building your anemometer, first get your sturdy piece of cardboard. You want it nice and thick so it's sturdy and can hold up in the wind. Um, my piece is about 10 inches long, so that's a pretty good length. And then we're just going to cut um, two equal uh, strips that are about an inch and a half wide. So I'm just going to eyeball it and start cutting. So about that thick. And cut all the way down. There we go. So I have one strip and I'm going to just cut one more and trying to make them even. There we go. So I have two strips of sturdy cardboard and now I want to make a perfect X with them. So you can do this with a ruler, but I'm just going to eyeball it right in the middle and then twist them to make a perfect X with 90 degree angles. You don't want to make it like that because your anemometer won't spin correctly. And you don't want to make the middle way up here. It won't spin properly either. So line them up, find the middle, and then twist. That's pretty good. And now I want to tape them so it stays nice and secure. And I'm going to use duct tape because it's really strong, uh, but you can use any type of tape. So just Taping the edges here, right there, right there, and then the other side, right there, right there. Okay, so I have a lot of tape. <laughs> All right, but now we have a nice X, nice and sturdy. So now we're going to tape our cups or our cylindrical um, shapes to the end of our uh, each little cardboard piece. Um, I'll show you with Dixie cups and I'll show you some other examples that I've made uh, later in this video. So I'll just use some scotch tape for this. And I want it right along the edge, right there, and put some tape. 
Okay, but I don't want it to be floppy. So I'm gonna put another piece of tape right here. There we go, so now it doesn't fall off. So I have tape on the front and on the back right here. So I'll do that three more times, but I need to make sure that my cups are facing the same way. So if it's facing this way, the next one will be this direction. Again, right along the edge. All right, there we go, and each piece is taped along the edge and this edge. Okay, so now we're going to put this um, on top of a pencil. So first you can get um, a pin uh, to poke the hole. So I have just a normal push pin here and it's gonna go right in the middle, right there, and just push it all the way through. So it kind of goes through a little bit. You can even poke both sides if you want to make sure the hole is nice and big. There we go. And if your pin is long enough, you can get your eraser and just stick it right on here. But I don't think this pin is long enough. It might be too wobbly, so it might fall off. So I'm going to get just a safety pin. You could also get um, a, a pin from like a sewing kit or even a paper clip that has a nice pointy end. So I'll use a safety pin. I'll just get that pin open and then take out my push pin and put in the safety pin all the way through. There we go. And now I can get my nice um, eraser from the pencil and stick it right through the middle. See if you can see that right there. And push it all the way as far as it can go. So it's nice and secure inside. All right, so now this anemometer should be ready to test out. You can test it with your own breath to see if it spins. Uh-oh. I got a little stuck. Maybe I should loosen up the safety pin a little bit. And it's a little bit lopsided. Maybe that means um, my cardboard pieces weren't even, but that's okay. You can just try to do your best. You can rebuild it like a scientist. They need to rebuild something if it doesn't work the first time or see if you can fix it. So now let's see. There we go. Pretty cool. So you can test your anemometer in front of a fan um, or go outside and test if there's a breeze outside. And I challenge you, if you have a stopwatch, to put the stopwatch on for one minute and count how many times it spins. So how many times it takes for this maybe blue cup to get all the way around. And how many times it, does that happen in one minute? So if you don't have a Dixie Cups in your house, the, there are some alternatives that you can use instead of a Dixie Cup. So I'll show you an anemometer that I made with water bottles. Uh, so I cut a water bottle in half, and four water bottles in half, and I use the tops of them to make uh, to substitute the Dixie Cups. And it still works pretty well. Uh, just make sure that the lids are still on. And let's see. There we go. 
And of course you can decorate this as well. Um, instead of using the water bottle tops, you can also use the bottom. So when you cut them in half, save the bottoms instead. And that just looks kind of like a Dixie cup. Another alternative, if you don't have four water bottles, you can also um, use toilet paper rolls or a paper towel tube. So I made this one by cutting uh, two uh, toilet paper tubes in half and then I um, cut out some cardboard in circles and taped it to the bottom to make like four mini cups. And I tape them all around just like with the Dixie Cup anemometer. And this one still works pretty well as well. Let's see. There we go. All right, so again, if you don't have Dixie Cups, try water bottles or toilet paper tubes. After making your anemometer, can you think of any ways to improve it? How would you make it more durable to last longer? How could you make it waterproof? If you have a plug-in fan at home that has different wind speed settings, try testing your anemometer to see how fast it spins on each setting. Thanks so much for joining me, scientists, and I hope you had fun making and testing out your anemometer.